Hi, it's Katrina. From falling in your sleep to laughing out loud, here are eight things your body does that science can't explain. But we'll try. Number eight, hypnic jerk. Have you ever gone to bed after a long day and then start dropping off to sleep when suddenly you feel as though you're falling off a cliff and you jerk awake? This is what is known as a hypnic jerk. It's an involuntary twitch which happens to a lot of people. It doesn't mean that waking up with your heart racing is pleasant. They can be caused by stress, anxiety, too much caffeine, medication, or exercising late at night. It can also be your body's way of sending us the message, like a little, are you sure you want to do this reminder before you enter the sleep state. It is usually an indication that your body is really not completely relaxed or is still stressed or when you didn't mean to fall asleep, like when you're driving. It helps us react to danger. Another theory is that it has something to do with your brain not quite nailing the transition between its sleeping and waking states. When we're asleep, our brain temporarily paralyzes our body. This means that you don't get up and act out even your most vivid dreams. But this paralysis can panic the waking brain, which can become a night terror. It is believed that if the brain gets the whole falling asleep and temporary paralysis thing the wrong way around, it can trick it into thinking that something is terribly wrong, causing it to jerk violently to be sure you haven't actually lost the use of your limbs. It's also a great way of making your boss completely aware of the fact that you've just dozed off in a meeting, again. Number seven, sun sneezing. Sun sneezing, or the photic sneeze reflex, is a phenomenon that causes some people to have a sneezing fit when they look at a bright light. Do you know anyone that this has happened to? Scientists call the effect an autosomal dominant compulsive heliophthalmic outburst, or achu for short. Haha, <laughs> very witty. Whilst this sounds like something of an old wives' tale, it's actually a real thing. We just don't quite know why. One thing we do know, though, is that it's most likely genetic. Sneezing is usually caused by irritation to the nasal cavity, so the fact that looking at the sun should irritate your nose is a bit odd. One possible explanation is that the eyes and the nose are closely linked via the fifth cranial nerve. This means that when this nerve is activated by bright light, the signal also kind of tickles the nose, tricking it into thinking there is something irritating it and causing the sneeze. While the effect seems pretty harmless or even useful if you have one of those sneezes that won't quite come, it can actually be pretty dangerous. A photic sneeze can often be triggered by suddenly emerging from a tunnel while you're driving, and it has even been recognized as a real problem for both commercial and military pilots. But even if we're not quite sure what causes it, we can still prevent the sun sneeze. The best remedy? A sweet pair of shades. And now for number six, but first, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Notification squad, I see you there. Number six, fingerprints. Without these guys, you could get away with murder, but no one is quite sure why humans have fingerprints. Most of the creases on your body are caused by repeated bending, stretching, and wrinkling, but the unique patterns on your fingers and toes are just there. The prints form while we are still in the womb, and despite the popular belief, not even identical twins have matching prints. There are a couple of schools of thought about our fingerprints. Some scientists think that they could be a way of improving grip in wet conditions, and it's thought that this is also the reason behind why you go all pruney when you spend all evening in the bathtub. Another theory is that it increases the sensitivity of our fingertips. We are able to detect lumps and bumps that are just 13 nanometers in size, so in this case, it's highly effective. It is thought that the common elliptical loop shape of the design is to ensure that some ridges are always being dragged sideways over a surface, allowing them to sense its texture. Either way, we're still pretty baffled as to what they're really for. Number five, kissing. Kissing isn't something that you see throughout the animal kingdom. In fact, it isn't even universal for all human cultures. So this must mean that it's a culturally learned behavior and it is not something intuitive. It has physiological effects on us, causing the body to release the bonding hormone oxytocin, so it could have developed as a bonding practice. There are many reasons thought to be behind why we kiss. One of the most common is that our first experiences of comfort, security, and love comes from when our mothers mouth fed us as infants. For example, chewing food and passing it directly from mouth to mouth. This was done by our ancestors and is still sometimes practiced today in certain cultures. However, cultures that practice kiss-feeding don't always practice social kissing or romantic kissing. 
Another theory is that humans are naturally attracted to bright colors, such as red, to help them spot ripe fruit, and this has somehow transferred over into sexual attraction. This theory also goes on to explain that, because red lips are more prominent in Caucasians, it suggests why it would have developed in northern latitudes and is spread culturally from there, explaining why it is not strictly a species-wide phenomenon. But who knows? There may also potentially be a link between kissing and assessing the biological compatibility of our potential mates. Some studies have shown that we are more attracted to the smell of sweat from people with immune systems that are most compatible with ours. So it could well be that the same thing is happening with kissing and saliva. Very romantic, right? In any case, it's believed the Greeks learned about erotic kissing from the Indians when Alexander the Great invaded India in 326 BC. Number 4. The Teenage Years Teenagers are weird, and I'm not just saying that as a boring adult. Teenagers are genuinely, scientifically weird. You just don't get them in the animal kingdom. You don't see bear cubs going around slamming doors or baby turtles getting nose rings. So what is it about humans that turns them from darling little angels into the spawn of Satan for seven to nine years? Why are humans so complicated? It's thought the reason why we all turn into greasy, bumbling dorks during our teenage years is that our brain is essentially rewiring itself. Scientists think that the reason the world suddenly doesn't make any sense the day after your 13th birthday is because your brain is shutting down and rerouting neural pathways in an attempt to build a brain that will be calm and logical. The puzzling thing is why this happens just as all of our hormones are going nuts. Surely once somebody becomes able to reproduce, it would make the most sense for them to be a highly desirable specimen and a solid evolutionary choice, rather than an insecure ball of nerves who struggles to flirt. Even science can't explain that one. Number 3. Sleeping Sleeping is actually an odd thing, and not one that we understand all that well. We need sleep or we would start to lose our minds and our brains would start to shut down. People view sleep as a way for our brain and body to recharge its batteries, in a sense. The human body gets its energy from food. The amount of energy saved by a good night's sleep is tiny, just about 50 kilocalories, and is far outweighed by the amount of energy being used up as you sleep just to keep you alive. So it's not really as though sleep is for energy in the usual way we would think. It's thought that sleep is a way of maintaining proper brain function, allowing it to perform maintenance without simultaneously having to deal with sensory input as it would like when you're awake. It's also thought that this is what is behind dreaming. Dreaming is also an odd phenomenon. It allows us to process our experiences from the safety of a dream world, meaning that we don't have to deal with the hormone levels that would usually be caused by a frightening or upsetting experience and it allows our brains to log it away and learn from it properly. This is why you can wake up from even the most terrifying dream and not remain scared by it for any longer than a couple of minutes. If we don't sleep, our brain function quickly begins to deteriorate. In fact, just 17 hours awake will bring brain function down to levels similar to how it works when we're over the legal drinking limit. Extended periods of sleeplessness will eventually cause disorientation, hallucinations, and eventually death. The world no sleep record currently stands at 11 days, not under torture. And by the time those 11 days were up, Randy Gardner, the test subject, was convinced that he was a famous soccer player. Number 2. Left-handedness Only around 10% of the human population is left-handed, and we're not entirely sure why. The fact that humans favor one side over the other is baffling enough to scientists. Most of the rest of the animal kingdom don't display any preference to one side apart from some apes and, weirdly, polar bears, who are generally left-handed. What we do know is that left-handedness is a genetic trait, but that's not really the confusing part. Even with the abnormal asymmetry taken as given, the statistics in themselves are also a little surprising. Archaeological evidence suggests that the 10% figure for lefties has remained pretty much steady throughout history. This means that we're not just seeing either the tail end of a dying breed or the beginning of the left-handed uprising but a consistent, if small, section of society with a left-handed preference. Another curious thing is that lefties' brains are not always wired the opposite as a right-handed person's. Often a lefty brain is the same as the brain of right-handers. Curiously, you can be left-handed but also right-footed, and many right-handers are left-footed. Generally speaking, you would have thought that with such heavy right-handed dominance, the recessive left-handed tendency would have died out by now, but it hasn't. Even with all of the weird societal taboos and fears that have arisen around left-handed people throughout history. Number 1. Laughter 
Despite the fact that it's something we do every day, scientists aren't entirely sure why humans laugh. There are only a handful of species in the planet that do it. Despite the fact that many other animals also have complex social structures like our own, they appear to be largely humorless. It appears to be most similar to the panting sound made by young apes when their parents tickle them, but seeing as we're equally in the dark as to why they do that, it's not all that helpful. Also, laughter isn't necessarily anything to do with humor. Anyone who has politely sat through their father-in-law's jokes will attest to that. It is reckoned that only around 20% of laughter is in response to an actual funny joke, or something like tickling. The rest is made up of polite guffaws and awkward giggles that punctuate conversation without anything really being funny. It's also thought that perhaps laughter is used as a way of controlling the behavior in our social groups. The difference between laughing with and laughing at someone could be the key. When you laugh at someone, you are essentially telling them that their behavior is not acceptable to your group. So you push them out or forcing them to change. Whereas laughing with is a signal that the behavior is accepted within the group. The fact that humor plays a role in sexual selection, you know the ladies appreciate a sense of humor. It could be the reason for its prevalence in humans. It could be a successful trait passed down through generations. Thanks for watching! Were you surprised by any of these? Let us know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon! Bye!